Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like looking at my background. I was like, what events do you actually run? Okay, so I do the indoor. I do. Now I'm trying to think what events they have different between the indoor and outdoor. So indoor, what they got? The 200, the 300. Mm-hmm. Tried the 60. It was. Oh. No yeah, 60? it's a quick one. Is the 60s one where it's like if you have a bad start, then mm-hmm. it's over. The race is done already. Over. The race is done already. Over. So. <laughs> Yeah, you know how that goes. And then at the end, you like everyone runs into the mat. At the end, you just like splat yourself against the mat. So this, me and the sixty were not a match, but we do the two hundred. The three hundred is my favorite one indoor. Um, and then I think that might have a four hundred indoor. And then maybe like a they talking about a six hundred, but I don't. That's too I don't much. Know. I stopped. <laughs> I know, but I said that about the 200, and then they got me running the four. Oh, so shit. I'll do whatever she needs me to do, but I don't know if it's my it's my first choice. But I had to get used to running on the bank track. It's like okay. this way. Oh, the curve. Like yes, the- it's curved. And so literally, like, if you are on the in the first lane, it literally feels like you're running like this. It's wild. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's crazy. Yeah. So the school you're at now has that? They have the bank tracks? So it's the complex in Gainesville. It's like oh, the, okay. uh, yeah, it's called like the celebration something. It's it's relatively new, um, but they have a, like Noah Lyles. We saw Noah Lyles there last year. So that was so, yeah, he was there last year. He ran the 60. He broke like the um, facility record or something. So that was really cool. Um, but yeah, so it's, I think it's one of the few ones in Florida just because our weather's so nice. Um, we don't have a lot of indoor facilities in Florida. Um, so it's nice that they have one here and I just, I, I like it. It's supposed to be pretty good, pretty fast. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, so I, I follow track. I follow enough of it. I think Yeah. indoor, I wouldn't say as much. I know yeah. for like all the trials and like the stuff that's like televised, I definitely yeah. follow it. Which one do you like more indoor or outdoor? Hmm. I think... Oh, that's a good question. I think outdoor, just because I feel stronger by the time outdoor comes. Indoor is like kind of just getting ready, getting in the groove of things. Like your practices start to shift more to meet weekends. But when you, by the time you get to outdoor, you're like in full swing and full gear. You're at your like maximum. You feel strong. You feel um, in all aspects. So indoor is more like the shift from training to competing um but you feel like a little race car on the on the indoor track so that's my favorite part that's the sound part. effects as you go around the corners it's like it's watching it of course you don't yeah. know how far that no and then you get up there and you got like your little block and you're like this way <laughs> i don't know like now that you're saying that yeah. it sounds a lot more dangerous than if you like miss a step or something? Yes, and it was right when they built the facility and they didn't have like a bottom to it yet. So it was like lifted and up and people were off this thing. This dude fell off. Yes, oh. yes. Mm-hmm. Crazy. It was wild. So yeah, I think overall I would say, I would say outdoor. But okay. then you got like the weather too. I will not say outdoor if it is windy, pushing me around. And then like rain, it's like rainy, yeah. But especially in Florida, most of the time we're good. You still meets in the rain, like they keep going. They will not cancel it, unless it's like I think they have like a lightning rule. I think that's how that works. I yeah, was about so to say. Like, yeah, it's like lightning. But for the most part, get on your horse. You're running. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it's always <laughs> like it's so interesting. <laughs> yes, and it's so interesting seeing everybody's like outfit attire for the days that are either like cold or rainy. You're trying to put that rain jacket on until the last. We're in the blocks with like rain jackets on, like. Jeez. Yes, and then you know, like the little compress. We all got like compression stuff on top of more compression stuff, so we're just like running like this. So, you got to do what you got to do, but sometimes mm-hmm. we look goofy. We look goofy doing it. Okay, I mean, if, you, if you're comfortable and you keep your, you know, body warm, I know that's important. Yeah. So you don't feel nothing when you start running out there. Yeah, but then once you take it off and get in the blocks, you're just like shivering oh, it's rough so that's it that is the benefit of indoor though it's yeah. predictable you know what you're gonna get when you go there yeah good i used to 
I know I don't look like it no more. I used to <laughs> back in uh, Maryland. Yeah, I used to go on track uh, for Glenn. I could have guessed that. Huh? I could have guessed that. Through? Yeah. That's cat. Yeah, come to one of the indoor ones. You can run unattached, line it up with Noah Lyles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get up there. You know how I'm not ready for you. <laughs> you know how there's, there's always that one person, like when they, I guess they show on like the TV, like they go across all the the lanes, and then they all look so serious. As soon as the race starts, one person always just drops back. That's gonna be me. That's At least way. you could come up with a sick intro though, like you know, for the Olympics, where they do like your close up, and he's got the little like Pokemon mm -hmm. card. You could come up with something fire. I'm gonna I'm gonna put like my Instagram tag on my chest. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get like a whole like blinged out necklace with just Naj across the front. Yeah, they will but, never let me back in the track. <laughs> I mean, maybe they like invite you every time. Maybe it'd be the opposite effect. You you might be on. The they got everybody show. tuned in. Everyone no, across the whole country's like, yeah. <laughs> don't hype me up though. <laughs> we don't hype me up. We we <laughs> Got your ego through the roof right now. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you actually from? I don't even know if I've ever asked you that. I am from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Most people think it oh. is a fake place. Kalamazoo does not sound like a real city, not a real town. It is. It is. Um, yeah. And so I'm a long way from home. Mm -hmm. I only visit during the summer now. My family moved down to Florida with me. Okay. So I am here to stay. I'm a, I'm a Florida girl officially. Um, but it's definitely very weird being so far away from home. Like everything I've ever known is in Michigan. Mm -hmm. So um, it's like vacation here every day. I, I definitely made the right decision, but it has been an adjustment for sure. But having my family here is definitely, that's definitely been my saving mm -hmm. grace. Like if my family was not here, it would be, I would feel just so estranged all all by myself here. But I've had so many like teammates, friends, coaches kind of like help me adjust as yeah, much as cool. possible to kind of being in a whole new other side of the country. Mm -hmm. So um I think overall, like it's been a decent transition considering, but it's weird not going like for Christmas, not having snow is so it's so it's so wild to me. Like just ha having it feel like normal seasons like actual christmas yes it's supposed to feel like yes even like halloween sometimes it'd be snowing for halloween in michigan really yeah i've only been up there once and it's it was super cold i went in december super cold you could have went during like march and it probably still would have been cold <laughs> i'm trying to think i'd probably say it snows like hmm I got. I don't want to. I don't want to say. I got to fact check myself. But I'm trying to count like the months out of the year where it's snowed. Some years are different than others. Sometimes it'll snow during Halloween. Sometimes it's beautiful. Um, but usually, like holidays feel like holidays when you have a transition in seasons. So now I'm like, it's Halloween, and I'm like, feel hot. What's going yeah, on? but listen, I'm in this today because <laughs> it's like. It's like 78, God forbid. And I'm like, oh my God, it's, how am I going to make it to class? It's so cold. So that is another thing that's changed is like in Michigan, it would be like 60. I was like, oh, let me put my bikini on. Let's go tan. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I was like, yes. And now it's like 75 here. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is unbelievable for Florida. I just, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I need a vacation. It's it's freezing. So you've been here longer than yeah, I guess. You've been here longer yeah. than you've been in Michigan. Um, so I moved here my freshman year of college. So i it's my third year here now. Oh shoot. So you you haven't even been to Floridian that long and you're already no, I'm brand new. Yep. Oh so this, okay. yeah, this is my third year. Yep. Man, I'm from Maryland, okay? So I already know everything. I don't know anything about Maryland. You don't. Not a th like what the typical life of a Marylander, what's it look like? All right, ready for this? So mm -hmm. there are many parts in Maryland, okay? Okay. The part that I am from, it, there's predominantly black people, you know? Okay. So growing up there, I don't know anything else outside of that yet. All okay. I see is just a bunch of black people, you know? Okay. And so um, it's called the DMV. It's like, have you ever heard of that term? Unless Not it's like far. where you get your license from. Oh, okay, then no. <laughs> <laughs> the DMV, 
is an abbreviation for DC, Maryland, and Virginia. Okay. So it's basically like if you were to look at the map of the US mm -hmm. and you do like a circle where they kind of all connect. Yep. There's usually like a huge pot of African American people. Okay. DMV is predominantly African American. Is it the spot like in between all of them where you could like put your arm here, here, and then your leg, and you're like technically in all three of them at one there's, at one time? We call that DC technically. Okay. Because there's not really any. I mean, there might be. There might be a spot where you like can. Like one spot where you could. Yeah. There might okay. be a spot, but I know okay. the DC is like the middle ground. Okay. Okay, so you can meet a bunch of different people in D.C. There's okay. a bunch of different ethnicities out in D.C. But the part of Maryland that I was from, a lot Not of Not so much. Okay. Yeah, so there's other parts of Maryland, like Landover, Wardor Waldorf, Bowie. <laughs> like, you can meet other people there. Okay. But, so my typical day in Maryland, in which I still miss, because, you know, we didn't grow up with technology. Right. So we would just go outside and play with the friends. Damn, old head, how old are you? I'm 24. You didn't grow up with technology? I mean, you you know what I'm trying to say. Like, mm -hmm. we weren't given Coco Melon and Yo Gabba Gabba. And okay, you're right. Okay, you're right. Okay, <laughs> you know, we had the Game Boy, Game Boy. Yeah. Or that little DS, you have a DS? I didn't have a DS. Those were the cool kids. See, I didn't, I didn't have my first PlayStation system until I was like, over 10, I think. I can't even remember when the, like, I didn't have it. And that was know. like a sweet treat for you. Yeah, because like, so what I did, mm, <laughs> Sorry, I, I also, I got you off track. I didn't no, mean no, to interrupt you. You're so good, you're so good. Cause I'm, I'm, you're taking me back too. Like I'm trying to describe the atmosphere to you, you know? Nostalgic. I hope, God, God uh, willing, I get to make like a movie about the environment that I grew up in. Cause I'm, I wanna be a director someday. Cool. So I, I'm already, like a little documentary, documentary yeah. and just like a movie, because like I, it the place that I grew up in mm -hmm. technically doesn't exist anymore. Oh, and that's like the sad part about it. Interesting. So what I'm, what I'm gonna describe to you doesn't okay. really exist. Oh, and so I can't like go visit there and be like. You can visit like the spot. It's just gonna be happen, you know. Yeah. But interesting. It's not the same. Yeah. You know, so um. I was homeschooled for a majority of my younger years because, and I didn't know if I could mention it, there was something called the DC Sniper back then. Okay. And so they was- approved to mention. I guess so. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I'm just not like a new one. Well, there was just like a, a criminal. There was, I don't know. There was, a, there was a criminal going around in- Okay. Okay. So- a lot of people were very like scared at the time to even right. leave the kids in school. So a lot mm -hmm. of them came out, got homeschooled. So I was homeschooled all the way until eighth grade. So mm. homeschooled. after you're done with school, it's like two o'clock. What do we do? Go you, outside. do? you know what I'm saying? So we're outside all day. That's we're so outside funny. all day until we go to like sports practices and stuff okay. like that. So that's all life was until eighth grade. And then um, life gets... So all, all of anything that you would want to do is close. So basically imagine the setting of Tampa. Okay. Like a bunch of black people. <laughs> That's like all it really was. It's just like, you got the movies nearby, you got parks, you yeah. got sports teams. You know, I was close to the Redskins stadium. You had everything going on right there. Everything, everything's there. Yeah. It's like... Church is close by, like everything that I need is within a 10, 20 minute radius besides okay. soccer practices. That's it. So everything's simple and it's fun because you got all your friends, you grow up with them, you got yeah. middle school friends, you go to high school with these middle school friends. Everything is fun. And it just keeps going, keeps going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I moved to Florida 2015. Okay. And then I went to Montverde Academy for three years. Okay. Went said Lake Sumter, which is a community college for one semester. I thought you said Lake something. I was like, <laughs> I was like you probably the name or like you forgot. Lake Sumter. Sumter. <laughs> okay, I got you. And then I came to UT after that. Okay. So yeah. you finished out at UT. Yeah. So I, I was I got accepted in the spring because there are so many people that are applying there, you know? 
Well, and then so. there was that one semester where they like overbooked it and people were staying in the Barrymore. Mm -hmm. the Do you get stuck in the Barrymore? So I didn't get stuck. I want my You got the Barrymore. You did. Oh man. Why do people like look down on it though? I liked it. I Listen, I'm not I've never been. I can't throw shade. You haven't. Mm -hmm. no, you got it. I've never you been. Man, you look I'm not throwing shade at the Barrymore. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not. If you liked it, I'll take your word for it. I loved it. You know why? Why? Because there's not many people over there. And the beds are comfy. So, like, you basically were having a little vacation. Mm -hmm. Especially, it's like a hotel. You literally had a vacation. Exactly. Oh, perfect. Because yeah. you yeah. sleep really good. Then you go to class. And it's quiet. There's nobody, like, that makes sense. <laughs> that See? makes sense. And Armature Works is down the street. Are you kidding me? You got the setup. And yeah. Knock. So was oh. it like a culture shock for you going from Maryland to down here to Florida? Absolutely. freaking yeah. Because it's probably the same for you. I'm going to ask you these questions. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You ever know what a Publix was? We got Meyer. I said, where's the Meyer? I don't what even know is that. Meyer? Exactly. I had I a giant. Meyer. It's called Giant. No, we're the weird ones. Shoppers. We're the weird ones. Not I really. I mean, I didn't think so either. I go to return my cans to Publix. What's bottle return? Okay, that's different. What do you mean? What do you mean you know what bottle return is? That was crazy to me. Other things like, I'm going to go buy a sucker. What is a sucker? Black pop. It's a sucker. Oh, my bad. It's a sucker. It's a sucker. <laughs> the lollipop ones are the are the rainbow ones that are What's all curly and big. That's a lollipop. And then the sucker is like a little... Tinier ones, a little like baby one. in the, with the plastic. Okay. Yes, like the okay. Tootsie Roll pop, the Tootsie Pop. Yes, and sense. then sometimes too, I'll have situations come up where I say certain words. Like what? When I say calendar, like a calendar. When I say soccer. When I say hockey. Sure. When oh. I say. I'm not making fun of you. Can you say soccer? Soccer. Whoa. When I say Valentine, that's another. Ooh. Soccer was the worst one. <laughs> soccer. soccer and hockey. Yeah. So there's just certain things where I'm like, I feel like we're about similar here. And then certain things will come up and I'll be like, wait, maybe we're not. What like, were like the weirdest things to you when like coming to Florida? Mm, it's definitely interesting because where I went to high school was already kind of, I don't want to say weird, but we would have like, bring your tractor to school day that's kind of fire so, like, it was fire but i didn't have a tractor so like to me oh. it was already like a culture shock if that makes sense so i literally went from like culture shock to culture shock is the only way i can describe <laughs> it and so he's traumatized like, <laughs> like, where do I belong? and yeah so like we'd have like bring your tractor to school day and then i came and it was like bring your rari to school day and i'm like from from florida to tampa and i was like Okay. So it was definitely just like polar opposite worlds, like tiny little. So I went to school in at Seago, Michigan. And it was, yeah, it was just kind of like a little, a little town, a cute little town. And then Tampa was like this big city. And so it was just polar opposites for me. And it was like right away. Like there was no time to like lean into it there was no time to like oh i'm gonna go for a week and then like visit and then stay and see if i it was literally just like from one to the other so that was crazy i'm really missing bring your tractor to school day though like i'd like to bring that back i think like how big were these tractors some people got these big ass tractors Jeez. yeah and i didn't have I one it looks like i didn't have one wow. i wasn't one of the cool kids i guess so you were just like basically just watching everyone else pick up you know, bring up their tractor. Just... Yeah, and it was fire. They were awesome. I was just like, I didn't have a tractor. <laughs> How'd you get yeah, in the track? Um, I actually only ran one track meet in high school. Whoa. Um, yeah. So I was a softball girl. Um okay. Yeah. So I had played softball my whole life. I think I was like five. And I played baseball. I have a twin brother, so I always wanted, no, we, uh, you know, t-ball together. You know how that goes. Um, I always made sure everyone knew I was a girl, though. I always wanted, like, my pink helmet and duh. And so I always kind of did stuff with him. 
And then I started to get into softball, um, travel sports, just kind of, it was always really intense competitively. Um, and it was a plot twist for everyone, including myself when I was like, I am not going to play in college. Um, it was, it was another, not even culture shock, just like a life. It had been part of my life for so long that not having it was just so strange. Um, I had offers from every division and it just didn't feel like a fit for me. Um, it was, yeah, it was, it was definitely a big change. Um, and then I was actually here for a softball camp. Um, when I had met, um, the coach at the time, he doesn't coach at Tampa anymore. Um, but I saw, I already liked the school and I was already on the fence about playing softball Mm -hmm. and I'd met him and it was just, it was just, it just felt like it was a match at the time. So I went back and then, um, for my last part of senior year, I dual sported and I was like, I'm just going to try to get a time that I could use to even like be recruited somewhat. Um, so I ran in one, one or two track meets, I believe. Um, and I actually false started and got disqualified from the meet on the one. <laughs> so I was like, so I don't even get to, I don't even get to that. And my like, oh, they were like, you get one chance. I'm like, Oh, we're locked in. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Like, how did how did like what were you feeling? It was it was just honestly humiliating. Like it was so embarrassing. And I was so mad at myself. It's like being disqualified, you can't even describe it to someone unless they've actually like, had it happen to them. Yeah. Like, especially when you only get one chance. And I didn't know I got one chance because obviously, like in track, if you've ever watched track, like you see sometimes it's like yo yo we'll give you a second chance like is it we're in a good mood today i'll give you a second and sometimes it's like red card let's let everyone in the whole entire stadium know this girl right here like right here get her out of here (laughs) so you know how that goes where it's like you don't really know lane three lane three (laughs) data bull heist get i need an escort on lane three red card red card red starts flashing lights (laughs) <laughs> like oh my god so i was like no it's chill like i'm gonna get a second like it's embarrassing but like and also when you disqualify everybody in your heat like low-key mad at you like it's an unspoken it's an unspoken like track not it, yeah it's like an unspoken track thing where like if you just it's not like anger it's more just like damn like now i gotta get back set again i gotta lock in again i gotta set my block again like it's just annoying. So obviously I'm like, oh, everyone's like, everyone's upset with me. But like, I get to try again. No. No, they got rid of my ass. I was out of there. Ugh, mm-hmm. So I ended up sneaking in one more meet. Okay. Um, It was like totally last minute. And I was so, I was so excited, so grateful. And I did not fall start. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was actually like 20 feet behind everyone because I was like, I'm not, I'm not fall starting again. And it was 15 degrees and snowing. Where was this? This was in this was in good old Michigan, and it was I don't remember what month it was. I'm trying to remember what month um, like high school track is. It's way different than um, in college, but I just remember it was so cold. Mm-hmm. It was so cold, and ever since then he was like, I mean, we can work with it, I guess. And I sent him over my times. Please, like, show mercy. Please, just give me, <laughs> give me a chance. So, and ever since then, like, um, it's fun just learning a lot. It's fun doing even new events. I know that that's, like, a crazy thing to say because, for the most part, most people don't think running is fun. I don't even know that I think running is fun. <laughs> I literally ask you, like, yeah. any misconceptions about, the like, anyone has asked you or told you or maybe said you're like that's not what track is at all like yeah that's a good question I think um I think one of them is that running is well I'm not going to say a misconception because I think it is true for a lot of people Mm -hmm. 
running is not zenful for me. I don't like, they're like, yeah, you have like a runner's high and you just like, oh, like you can't explain. I've never experienced that ever. Like I love working hard. I love the way that training makes my body feel. I just, I like competing and that's what keeps me going, but yeah. not, oh my gosh, I just can't wait to do this next rep. I've never felt that before. <laughs> never, ever. Like sometimes I even oh, walk right? I'm like, wow, I actually like, I'm going to quit after this practice. But baby, I always come back and I do it. I do it again. And um, it's just, <laughs> I, I think that that might be not a misconception, but definitely something that's a hot take, I think. Oh, yeah. It's a hot take, um, gotcha. especially like sprinting. I can, I think it's more common in like longer runs, um, like longer distances. But when you're sprinting, you don't even have time to feel zen. You're just pedal to the metal. Let's get her done. Can't miss so, it either. Or you're running a 400 and you're thinking the whole time about, <laughs> like you're fighting demons the whole time. <laughs> like yeah so I, I haven't felt that zen i um i envy the people that do but i find motivation in other places that keeps me going but the 400 especially um i had never ran a 400 in ever um I ran the one and the two my high school season which is what qualified me for um tampa and then I ran my first year at Tampa. I was kind of, I was just having a good time. I loved it. It was so fun. And the sport was so new to me. It was just like, it was just a blast. I was having a great time. Yeah, and that's then, good. Yeah, it was awesome. And then um, my second year at Tampa, they tossed me in the 400 for like one of our last meets. Mm -hmm. And I broke the school record. And then I never got out of it since then i was like yo i should have like ran that one slower like I, <laughs> so, I mean the 400s the 400 it's just it's it's a feeling you can't describe to anybody it is just a very intense event it's very it's it's almost more mental than it is physically um which is i didn't think possible but it, it is very i'd probably say equally as much mental as it is physical it's definitely both yeah. it's like when your legs give out, you got to tell yourself to move. You have to, but you can't, but <laughs> exactly, exactly. You're like fighting with yourself, which is the weirdest feeling to have. You're fighting your own body. And, and competing wild. at the same time. Yes. Mm -hmm. So obviously like there's different elements of that to every event, um, long distance, short distance, but it was the first time that I had experienced it because mm -hmm. I just had ran a 100 and 200 for fun. And then all of a sudden just like bumped up the level of competition, bumped up the level of, you know, like self-awareness of how I was feeling. I was like, oh, wait, ow, <laughs> this, this hurts. It hurts. It's not so, fun. It's, no. This is a different kind of event. This is different. This is different. <laughs> so, obviously I was so um, grateful to have, you know, performed the way that I did. Um, and then we only kept getting better from there. So I'm hoping that this season we can keep continuing to, lock in, cut that time down a little mm -hmm. bit, but it is motivating for me knowing that I haven't specialized in it before. I haven't like really trained specifically for it before. So it's kind of fun knowing that I still have progress to be made. Yeah. Um, so I am hoping we're going to be working hard, locking in for those Zen, Zenless workouts. Yes. <laughs> so, Zenless is a word. You just make, yeah, I like Yeah, we got to put in the work. So I hope that, you know, we get the results. I know me and my team are out there grinding every day. So I'm excited for a good season. I think it's going to be fun. I know at UT, you definitely broke a lot of records. And it was actually, I would say, like, of course, it's great, fantastic. Yeah. It's kind of funny, the fact that me being on the media side, yeah. you know, like, oh, Jada broke another record. Like, <laughs> like we just finished that graphic. What do you like, mean? <laughs> what's going on? Oh, you yeah. were the one behind the gra the fire graphics, though. No, no, not all of them. But just, I would mm -hmm. I would be the one to, like, know what yeah. has to go out. Right? We would yeah. have to know, like, okay. We have to watch this track meet. Like, oh, Jada broke another record. Oh, darn. Like, what? Sorry. Right. Got you working <laughs> behind the scenes, my dad. Right? Made my job harder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to keep you busy. Thank you. Can't have you, bored, can't have you bored sitting around. Oh, I was never bored. <laughs> we, we will not go down that road. <laughs> so, um, but the relays, the relays are my favorite. We broke them at Tampa, the broke the records at Tampa too. So I think that's what I'm most like one of the things I'm most excited for this season. Um, we've got some really talented girls, so I'm really excited 
Um, cause the 400s out like misery loves company. Like when you got to run a 400, but you know, your friends have to, too, you're like, yeah, like, let's do this. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm definitely excited for the four by four. That was, okay. yeah. Which also controversial. Cause I don't yeah. know. I was, you'd be seeing all these like TikToks where it's like, my coach told me I have to run the four by four and it's like the kid hiding in the woods. Like, <laughs> like right away. Yeah. But, um, I think I think we're gonna have I think we're gonna have some fun. I think we're gonna to pr do really good. I'm excited yeah, to see how it goes. I'm, I'm excited to even watch. Like I'm I'm getting yeah. more into sports everywhere. Like I will watch a random not random sport, but just like, random sport. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll watch a sport on a different school. It's like a school yeah. I have no business watching simply because I either know somebody or I just want to watch them to see how they do. Just does it make it more interesting for you to watch sports when you know somebody? Thank you for asking that. Great question. Yeah. So, yeah. because also being the like videographer or content right. creator, you know, it is so much more fun for me to know the stories behind the athletes. Yeah. So much because it, it to us, the people who are actually like doing the like media, yeah. the clips itself becomes so much more impactful. Like we yeah. know how much it means to the players watching it back. Yeah. So, there's like, like a, a really a connection between them now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like you, you simply watching um because like I was with the volleyball team a lot. Mm -hmm. So I knew a lot of the girls. And so it, it just got so much more fun continuously, like knowing which person is gonna do what and yeah. when, how they move. And it's it's almost strange because I'll give you a good example. I'm gonna use Jake. I'm gonna pick on him. I Jake! Love him. I got a death. That's not <laughs> good. And so knowing how he runs he's he's pretty fast yeah but when he has his long hair mm -hmm. it's like certain things that i'll just pick up on like okay like specifics yeah you know like the last 10 steps he's gonna start <laughs> like, yeah, a little breakdown step like, and he's gonna do like, his little routine getting in the blocks there you go so it's just it's more fun to watch that way because you almost know what's going to happen and you have a different kind of like support system pretty much just wanting that person to succeed yeah. so of course at least like we almost get a chance to be inside of the sport as well that's so fascinating to like the concept of that yeah. also though like i can at least say it from my end and i'm assuming that you feel the same way but mm -hmm. like when you have a connection with somebody who's like taking pictures or videos or any kind of anything artistically like it's more fun when i can just I obviously it's a prof there's a professional aspect to it, but when mm -hmm. I feel like I can be myself and I can just like let loose and there's less pressure, like it makes it so fun to perform for pictures and videos. And like, I know that you're going to support me. You're going to cheer me on. You're going to hype me up and it doesn't have to be some awkward. Okay. Pose this. Oh, and I have to think about <laughs> But especially when you're running, anybody <laughs> ever has any running pictures of them knows. Sometimes mm -hmm. you look back at pictures, you're making this face off the blocks, you're jumping over a hurdle, and you, you got your tongue out. Like there's always something. So like mm -hmm. being able to just, I guess, not be self conscious about, you know, what pictures they're taking, and knowing that you are trying your best to get the good ones of me, like hey. Jake and his, with the hair and the blocks and. <laughs> He looks swag and you're gonna get the you're gonna get those moments he looks swag. Mm -hmm. And I know you're gonna get those moments of me when I look swag. Mm hundred -hmm. percent. And then we both succeed because you got the good flicks and I win win. I win, just win. make y'all look cooler than you actually are. <laughs> so, and then we make you look cool. Boom. Bam. Fights for everyone. Yeah. Boom. Everyone wins. Everybody and, wins. Everybody wins. And that, exactly. that's like the, the funniest thing that people, I guess, that are getting their pictures taken don't yeah. ever know is what they may look like in the pictures that they don't see. Yes. Well, I've seen some. You didn't do them dirty like that. Or you did, no. but then didn't let them know that you did. Exactly. I'm gonna keep these ones in the archives. <laughs> I didn't mean to do them bad. It was I just didn't like capture them in the you know yes. especially whatever. in running the moment you go up, oh you're looking snatched and sexy and the minute you go down <laughs> it is just 
<laughs> keep that one in the archives. Keep Man. that one in the archives. We I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. No, I know exactly what you're talking about because yes. there's so many clips where we may have to like slow stuff down, you know, like the slow mo. Yeah. yeah. So you, you can see it sometimes. You can. You see don't it. say anything though. But if it's bad, then we no. just take. It just, I just it doesn't come to you. I don't send it to you. <laughs> that makes sense. What sport has like the e not the easiest, but like the most photogenic moments for you? Ooh. Wow. See, this is gonna sound strange. Okay, I'm ready for it. So I played soccer. Okay. For a long time. I know how that sport works. Okay. I do not like recording it. That is interesting. What I do you think that is? Despise it. Take it back. I don't despise it. I take it back. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a second. Wait. Um, I was thinking of the trend. It was like, wait, do the dance. Wait. wait. <laughs> I haven't actually seen a person do it. I only see cats. Okay. So yeah, I've only seen cats do it, not people yet. Interesting. <laughs> Maybe I will after we just talked about it though. You know how your phone picks stuff up? You're right. It's so creepy. It's Maybe so creepy. Maybe my bank account will have a million dollars in it. Psst, psst, psst. <laughs> <laughs> picks up on it. <laughs> well, um, so you don't yeah. like you don't like doing soccer. I, 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 if it was like a professional sport, yeah, professional soccer, I'll do it. It I'll might just like not be your go-to. I just, yeah, like I, just, I, it's so weird. I think also because I know how the game works. Yeah. And I like to continuously be on the camera. Yeah. So if the ball is in like the other end of the field, I'm gonna get bored. Like, I'm just wasting my time. Over there. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna feel like. Yeah. yeah. I feel no like. That. Yeah, I feel like volleyball would have the most, like, action packed. Like, if you really got to get your bang for a buck, mm. volleyball. Like, they're always mm. doing spike it, dive, hit, bump. Like, <laughs> everyone's doing something all the time. It's actually hard to take volleyball photos. Like, yeah. it's so much harder than anybody yeah. thinks. Because I was first doing a video, video, you just go this person, this person, this person. But a no. picture, like, you have to actually, like, lock in on that one per That makes sense. No. That would be difficult. I didn't know. Because, like, because at the time, uh, when I first came into the department, yeah, we didn't have anybody really doing video like that or like consistently. Yeah. So since I was there all the time, because I had so much time on my hands being a yeah. freshman sophomore, I was the only one there to do it. Yeah. And so when I started to do volleyball, just like you said earlier, at first it was like slightly awkward interactions because like who's this new person? He doesn't who's really this new guy over here. Exactly, because I'm I'm not really saying hi to people. Plus, of course, being a man recording a female sport you never yeah. know how it's going to be interpreted at first like dynamics yeah exactly so i'm just want to be respectful of everyone so i just yeah. mind my business and so eventually when the videos start to pick up then when i would come to the you're gym like, Wait, you're fire like you want to be my friend yeah <laughs> like hey hey no it's like okay yeah there's now yeah, now yeah. we can start to talk but um you feel like you had to prove yourself to get in with the early i think yeah. I, I didn't want to come off weird because yeah. I am a male recording women. You know what that I mean? That makes sense. Yeah. And so, yeah, I just I just don't want that interaction to be weird whatsoever. Yeah, that was insightful of you. Yeah. So yeah. I just, that's just me thinking. Yeah. But um, I, me recording all the time and just doing video first, I yeah. got really good at that. So I already knew which places to go and sit. Like oh, I had some spots. Yeah. And then when I tried photos, they did not come out the same. I was like, oh my goodness. Well, especially because volleyball, it like it's sports like volleyball, they move so fast with so many different people. Like at least tennis, there's mm -hmm. one person. Like there's a lot going on, but it's one person that you can lock in on. Mm -hmm. When it's vol like you don't even know who's gonna get the ball. I played you volleyball know. and I didn't even know if I was gonna get the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta watch it game like you have to watch the game and also be mindful of when something's gonna happen and that's a yeah. skill in itself skill in itself so i was gonna do say feel, yeah basketball. Just, oh basketball to me just to me yeah that makes sense just to me do you think that you're able to fully like 
immerse yourself in a game or a meet or like anything that you're photographing while you're taking pictures like are you able to be like Hmm. in the game while you take the pictures or you think that's separate it's a great question see i don't think i ever got the chance to think that yeah till when it was actually time to like leave leave ut yeah you know like what we were talking about earlier Mm -hmm. it was like it was so strange because it was the first time that I actually fully watched a volleyball game without the camera in my hand. It was so different. So different. So different. I don't was even... it like more relaxing for you or did you feel like you were less connected? No. <laughs> it felt wrong. <laughs> like, hey, like I should be doing something. Like I should be doing something. Yeah. It felt so wrong. Because I'm so sitting weird. and watching. I'm not saying anything. And, yeah. it, and I obviously don't say anything when I'm on the camera either. Right. But I still feels like a help when I'm. So you're like breathing isn't in the back of the vein. <sighs> Don't say that because I have asthma and my nose is like. Oh a no! You <laughs> making noise. <laughs> I'm dead. That's so funny. <laughs> or like the little nose whistle. <laughs> There's oh so many. Gosh, that's so funny. You'd know that I recorded it because you can hear. My- you breathe it in the back. <laughs> You can hear my whistle. That oh. is so funny. That is hilarious. <laughs> oh my it. gosh. Yeah. So what you just like mute it and then like put some fire music over top? Uh-uh. Like there's oh, no you mute it. where people are talking. Yeah. I can't mute that. So that you will just hear me like the whistle. Like you gotta suck it up. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know what it is. I think it's just like so like I remember when I was younger, when yeah. like doctors were definitely like you know checking my nostrils and stuff, they would yeah. always say like my nasal passages are just small, so they're definitely at a certain diameter to where they just whistle. If I <laughs> you using scientific explanations to explain why your nostrils whistle is really. I'm sorry. I just... I'm trying to take you serious. <laughs> the um the minimized circumference and the diameter of my nostrils is actually the reason why. I... <laughs> By my calculations. Mm, apparently. <laughs> actually. actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Well, yeah. speaking of like um, I was gonna say like bodily noises, but that just I have basically my ankles they mm-hmm. crack every time that I walk not like a little crack they're like i'm trying to see if i can like don't do it now (laughs) (laughs) so basically every time that i walk or run or move my ankle in any any way shape or form they like crack and so it was my first day here at practice everybody at tampa got used to it it was like my introduction i was like they're really loud and really weird so when we do our warm-up lap I'm sorry in advance, but I didn't tell the, my new team here, and we were doing warm-ups, and then someone was like, what is that noise? Does it like, hurt? I don't feel it at all. Okay, Not even good. a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's at least good, but my dad's ankles are the same way, so we've been trying to figure it out for a while. Like, what is co- like, what actually is the cause of that? have no idea. It doesn't hurt. I've always had it, and I think I've only met, like, one other person whose ankles did that. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. You broke records with those ankles. I broke records with those ankles. Nice. Yeah. So I don't know what it is. Um, I haven't had anyone be like, yeah, let's fix them because they don't hurt. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm just going to cause a ruckus when Mm -hmm. when I run and just, but it is very strange. And everyone always makes comments about it. I'm like, sorry, it's my fault. So it must be loud, I guess. Yeah, it's loud. And it's weird because the weather also affects them. So sometimes mm-hmm. it'll be like, if it's really cold, mm-hmm. they're... And then I think it gets better when it gets hot. I think that it's if it's really hot, they crack less. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the cold, they're just... I'm, I'm surprised that you never heard them before. I don't think I paid attention to it. That's like yeah. not the most common thing that... You know. Yeah, to like be, mm, let me watch out for that girl's loud ankles. <laughs> what is, yeah, no, probably not. Probably not. But if if we ever are at a meet where you're there, I'll I'll show you. Because it's in Gainesville, if you pull up. In Gainesville. Gainesville. I'll be there. Gainesville and USF. Gainesville. I'll be at both of them. Yeah. Do you still run the one? 
I did it as much last year. I like the 100. Um, I never really properly learned how to, I never perfected the block start. Same as the 60 that I mentioned earlier. It's still working on it? It's still a work in progress? It's, it's a work in progress, yeah. yeah. We haven't gotten to a lot of blocks in preseason, um, but I know that I know that it's coming. So I'm excited um, to not even with just the coach, but a lot of the girls on the team um, feel really confident in, um, in their block starts, especially even just like drills that I've seen them do that just helps explosiveness. Um, I don't think I'm there yet. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, even critiquing little things with, you know, the block start with um, just kind of drills to help me actually get out of the block. I think that the hundred can be something that I try again. Mm -hmm. I, I hope so. So we'll see what happens. I kind of just am waiting to get bossed around. I kind of, I just go where they tell me to go. I just do my part however I can. So um, kind of just going with the flow and seeing what happens. Yeah. Let them compliment. I love your honesty and openness and just like knowing that, knowing how you have to be coachable. Yeah. I try. And it's not hard. Like when, I mean, it's not easy when somebody like is telling you like, oh man, like, or the worst actually, thank you for the compliment. But the worst to me is actually when I have to watch a video back of myself, mm. like versus a coach telling me, I, I think that a lot of people are more self-critical than anyone else can be critical of them. Like I'm harder on myself than I think anyone else could be. So watching a video back of myself, I'm like, Girl, what are you doing? Why do you look like that? Versus coach might just be like, hey, like, let's adjust your angles a little bit. Let's, you know, you know, lift your lift your hips, lift your knees, lift your whatever. And I'm watching this video. I'm like, mm -hmm. you even run track and field. So it's kind of like, I don't <laughs> know. I think it's almost worse to coach, not even coach yourself, but like watch yourself and critique yeah. yourself. And just because we're so we just have such high expectations. Yeah. So yeah. self-critical. So obviously like being open to coaching, I try to, you know, be very open-minded. I know that at the end of the day, like coaches want me to do good as much as I want to do good. So I try to be open-minded, but um, sometimes getting, getting advice is hard, you know, especially when it's something that you keep working on and you just can't figure out for some reason, just because of like habit or, you know, you've just done it for so long that you just can't break it. So when someone's telling you over and over again, Jada, do this, Jada, do this, Jada, do this. I'm like, I'm trying so hard. I'm trying so hard. I swear. So it's definitely, it's definitely hard, like hearing or watching yourself and wanting to fix things, yeah. especially if you are struggling to do so. But at the end of the day, that's what makes you better. So exactly. it's a combination of like watching yourself and, you know, getting outside opinions to, Kind of mm -hmm. do the best that you can. Going back the next day to try to perfect it. The mm -hmm. next day, grind the next day. Right. Yep. Every single day. I know Every now. Day. Now that I know that you play softball, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Was, you know, only thought you were in track. I had no clue. Yeah. Now that then when you got into track, were there any specific track athletes that were like you know professionals, Olympians that you? That's a good question. I'm gonna be so honest. I did not know a single person. Not one. I knew Usain Bolt. I knew Shakari. I knew Shakari. And that was all that I had. We went to the meet with Noah Lyles. Who's Noah Lyles? Who is that? I met Matthew Bowling at some meet. Wow. We're in line next to each other. People are all just chatting. Everyone's chatting. Oh my God, you're you were you're just, did you just talk to Matthew Bowling? Who? No, because you then now you don't really get like the awesome. jitters. It was you know so, and it was it was cool because a lot of these meets that we're at, there's like really talented, cool people at these meets. So I've tried, um, like learning and you know, yeah, if it's my sport, like I want to know who's the best at it. Like I want to mm -hmm. be inspired the same way that you know, in every aspect of life. Like if there's something that you're interested in that someone's just really good at, like. Exactly. It's fun to look up to people. It's fun to learn from people. It's fun to just like admire somebody for being talented. So mm -hmm. obviously now that I have become a track and field athlete, it's definitely very interesting for me. Like the Olympics, I've never been so like pumped pumped for an Olympics, especially track. Like I always like track is fun to watch, especially at such a high level. But no, now knowing like 
certain things that I know about each race than like putting myself into the position of actually mm-hmm. like being there or like having them run the same event as me is just so yep. it's so interesting to think about. So I've definitely um we got to meet TT Terry. She came to visit our school. She was awesome. She was so cool. Um she showed up in this like <laughs> gold gold um decorated like little nike top with matching leggings and her shoes ah she was she's a badass so it was so it was so cool to meet her um you ready for this what'd you say you ready for this yeah well i i was in shock i didn't know you're gonna say that name because so my sister i guess is technically friends with tt terry now no way i'm jealous because how did they meet? Because um, I don't even know the. I think it was like it, it was an event for my sister. Okay. I don't know the name of the event. I just know that she asked TT Terry if she would come to like give her like a pen of some sort. So she said yes. No way. So my so at first my mom was like, oh, just a track athlete is gonna come. Uh, and, just casually. Right, and then she sends me the photo. I'm like this. What? Like, <laughs> she was just in sprinters. Like she's Kari's best friend. Like what's going on? Like, how like do- she's her. Like that's not just a track yeah. athlete. That's not just a track. Athlete. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. That is insane. So you could just like go pull up to a party and you're just TT Terry's there. Pretty much. Now I can. I mean, if your sister's friends with her, that means you're basically friends with her. This is 14. That's what I mean. Why it's like. That's why I'm oh, she's the coolest kid on the block for sure. Yeah, that's what oh, I'm that's saying. so cool. <laughs> that's what I'm like, wow. Like, I didn't... That's so cool. Well, yeah. we had talked about, um, you know, you growing up with technology, et cetera. And we brought up the DS. Mm-hmm. And that was like, you know what I was talking about. So we had this kid when TT Terry came. And he pulls out said DS and takes a photo with her on his DS. And it was the funny, like, her reaction was so funny. She didn't even like flinch. She's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was so fun. It was so right. funny. Yeah. I just, she oh was just, God. yeah, she's so cool. And it was so, it was so nice for her to come and, you know, talk to us. I know that she's so busy. And even that day she was like, yeah, I got a flight here. I got a flight there. Like I am very specific time slots for everything. So it was so cool. She shared so much about, you know, her story and, on life on and off the track and it was just it was really inspiring it was really cool it was cool to have her there that's exactly how my, my mom described her that's just yeah. so hard. Um, yeah and she's I, also just like so down to earth like yeah yeah she seemed like that's man like that that alone in people that you like look up to yeah it, that it makes really you, cool. you know, the feel, i don't know they're like the but i'm like there. if i got a gold medal I don't even know that I'd be that cool with all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, yeah, what's up? Yeah, what's up? So, yeah, I don't even know that I would have been that chill, but she was she was fire. It was really cool that she was there. I don't know how my coach pulled that off, but Coach Nixon, thank you. Thank you for that, Coach Smoka. You guys are fire because it was so cool. That's no, but how do you, like, just email someone? Email? Like, what do you mean? hey – like email text like how do you just how do you pull it off okay so the the my sister is still going to the same school that i went to okay but um what should we call it i don't think i can give the information away let's just say mm-hmm. that the keep it on the dl classified yep 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 let's just say that there are athletes in the area of orlando that do train yes. in that area yes so, correct there are people in the area that know each other that, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Friend of a friend. There you go. So they, yeah. there's there's opportunities yes. to reach out. Perfect way to put it. I'm trying to literally tiptoe without yeah. exposure. But, yeah. um, you know, even like now, because I, I do not consider myself a podcaster. I'm really not. I just like. Well, you are now. Attack. Sure. I think I'm. I'm change. Yes. You're evolving. <laughs> <laughs> I just like meeting people, networking, yeah. and obviously this is also a chance to like meet those same exact people. Yeah. So it's been strange that I've been getting yeses back from those same people. Yeah. Like track athletes. That's so cool. I'm just like, what the freak? So like you'll definitely see in like a couple of weeks. Yeah. Like certain people, like how the heck did Nash get this? 
I don't know either. They just say yes. I don't know either, but <laughs> That's I, did it. I did it. Well, and like you said, though, like as you expand with relationships and networking, like it's only going to increase because mm-hmm. then it's going to be little things like, oh, like I saw my friend T.T. Terry. She on a podcast with Naj. I want to be on the podcast. And then it just spreads and builds yeah. and, and everything. And obviously, like you're so likable. Everybody going to like you. They're like, I want to go on this podcast. Maybe people start reaching out to you. Hopefully that's like the plan. And then I could yeah. be a lot more selective because yeah. to be honest, I don't, I'm not going to say I don't want everyone on here, but I don't want everyone. On here. I'm keeping it at a certain niche, you know, yeah, that Motives, makes sense. faith athletes. That's it. So yeah. of course, any, obviously any athlete can join. Yeah. People are wilding out. We're not talking. Like, <laughs> we have to keep oh, that's fair. Yeah. You know? That's valid. That makes no sense. Drama. Like, Oh, like, what did you say about so-and-so? Like, no. what'd you say on here? You could have like a spill the tea session. Yeah, they come no. on like anonymously with like the black screen and their voice, like um, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Or they the movies where it's like this. <laughs> I, I have some tea to spill about so and so. Yeah, the day yeah. we were talking about. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> this is not the shade room. This, this is, is not that. This is not that. Now yeah, no. on that topic. Yes. Have you ever, or have you, or when you? meet people that definitely look up to you what do you think you would like tell them like, if it was like a little girl that came to Ooh, you this is a good like, question you know I mean? she's like hmm, 10 years old she's like oh my gosh like i've been watching you for like years can you sign like my spike what would you tell her that is a very good question hmm it's definitely It's definitely a hard concept to think about only because like to me, having someone look up to you would be like, you have to be in the Olympics. You have to be, you know, basically the elite of the elite in your area, your like expertise, Um, whether it's like some type of profession, whether it's some type of athletics, whether it's some type of education, like, but I don't think that's necessarily the case because like when I was younger, you could just be, I mean, you don't even really have to be anything special. When I'm like six, if you're like my babysitter, I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so cool. So it's weird to think about that now though. And be like, you don't have to be a gold medalist to Mm -hmm. inspire people. Like you don't have to be um, like, and you can still be talented and still be, or just mediocre talented to, you know, make people feel good, make people motivated. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's definitely weird um, being, like a division one athlete in a sport that I've never really um, that hasn't been part of my life for a long time. Mm-hmm. Cause it's definitely an adjustment to be like, wait, like maybe people are actually watching. Maybe people are actually like listening to my story or like want to, you know, it, it could, it could resonate with somebody. Like that's just so interesting to think about. So, and obviously you always think of yourself as looking to other people but sometimes you don't think about like who are the people looking up to me? Like I can I can play a part in someone's in someone's choices and someone's you know motivation and, and goals. And that's just a cool thing to think about. Exactly. So I think it's a it's one of the first times where I've I've felt it where I'm like this is like this is cool. I could I could mean something to somebody. You know the way that a lot of people mean things to me. So and it doesn't necessarily have to mean that you're an Olympian. It can just be. Like I looked that up that way to even some of my professors, like you're so smart and you know, you don't even have to be Einstein. I just think you're cool. And I want to learn from you. In so it's cool. Yeah. You know, exactly. Well, I, I still remember when you, Lauren, Lillian, I keep calling her Lauren. Oh my freaking gosh. I got to edit this out. Edit out. Scratch. <laughs> scratch <that. laughs> this is not making the cut. <laughs> still remember you, Lillian. Yeah. And really training at Athlete Innovations. Yep. I think that was the first time I met you. And that was the first time. And that was still to this day, like one of the hardest workouts I've ever done. I'm dead. And that's yeah. Right. Cliff kicked my butt. Oh my goodness. He really did. The wildest part and the funniest part, since I'm the person that records everything in there, you yeah. know, when the NFL veterans, especially, the NFL veterans, the people that are in the league or going yeah. back to a team that are training, I don't say a word. Do you know why? 
Why? There's this rule. Since if I like joke around or something, they'll okay. make me work out with them. You get it? So if I touch a your bar, mouth is shut. Your mouth is. Yep. Cause yeah. they do some crazy workouts. And the Even workout, when I was there, I was like, what the heck? The workout that I joined in by accident, not knowing they were going to do crazy stuff, is. Like, I'll tag along with you. Yeah, something chill. I'll tag along with you. Light, man. I've watched this over and over and over, but it's on a Friday. And if you know Cliff. No, you don't go on a Friday. Never go on Friday. No, don't so, go on a Friday. The exercise I jump in on after I put the camera down is you have to hold yourself up on the uh, pull-up bar. Just hold, hold it. 30 seconds. 30. Next one, minute. No. I can't feel my biceps. No. I didn't and pick you up. Won't for the next week. You won't for the next week. I went home. See, but listen, <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> I went home. My ass went home. I'm surprised. Oh, wait. I'm surprised, though, that you didn't have um, some type of sled pushing. That was his favorite. That was his favorite to do. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. He'd always have us pushing the sled, pulling the sled on top of the sled. But under I the sled. Whatever he could do with the sled, he was doing it. Whatever he could do with the sled, we did it. Now, you can actually be, like, the person who vouches that the sleds are not as easy as they look. When you no, do no. If nice. you think the sleds are fun, if you think the sleds are cute, it's a little sled push. No, nice. it's not. No. No, it's not. Like um, that, That's like that type of workout, too, where, like, a lot of the times you do, like, I don't know, like, a, a few reps of something, and you're like, oh, yeah, like, I'm starting to feel it. The sleds are like, you do one down and back, and you're like, okay. Oh, it's a killer. I'm going to pack my bag, and I'm going to get my <laughs> like, it's, it's wild. It's wild. I'm going to go. <laughs> um, that's enough. That's enough for today. And um, he he would never let you quit either. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I still remember. I literally still remember that day only because I was very close with Lily. Lily and I was getting to know. She was like yeah. just a funny character. But I didn't know you yet, and so yeah. I was like, I was a new character, a new character unlocked. Exactly. New yeah. Character. yeah. <laughs> but what? Well, another compliment. I'm a big compliment person. Okay, she's a compliment person. So the same way that you're like bubbly and energetic, you were then. And I was like, this I is I was so probably faking it. I was probably faking it, Naj. Faking it? What you mean? Oh, shoot. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm, I thought you were talking like in the workout, like how I was bubbly and happy. I was like, no, yeah. that off, with off you, camera. that was real. I swear. <laughs> yeah, off camera, off camera. yeah, yeah. So I never told you that I remember it that day. I definitely remembered it, though, because I definitely appreciated your guys' energy in the building, everything. Yeah. That's awesome. like we were talking we do the about. same with us. Like, it was just fun. Like, we just had a yeah, good day that day. Yeah. Makes it more it was, fun for me. It was definitely just a fun day. But you know how sometimes during those workouts, I'm not I'm not cute. I'm not happy. I'm not smiling. No. Mm -mm. I mean, you got to try. You got to try. Is like, there a specific track, like, not workout? Is there a specific track drill that is just, like, all of the – all of the runners just like, oh, Ooh, that's a good question. It's very interesting because um, obviously, first off, when you ask me these questions, it's weird for me to answer because this is still like I'm still learning so much about like the do's, the don'ts, the hard, the easy, oh, the cool. like unsaid everything. So um, I'm. it's like it's still stuff that I'm thinking about where I'm like, wait, like that's a good question. I guess I never really thought about that. Um it's very interesting because in my mind, what's hard for me would be hard for everyone else. Like if we have a a day with freaking 300 repeats, which is a workout, a new workout that I've had to do, I'm barfing. Everybody barfing. That's got to be the worst workout. Like it has to be. But it's so interesting because some people love it. Some people do, oh, just 300 days is just, oh. And then we do the 100s, which are easier. Mm -hmm. I hate the 100 workout. So it's just so interesting where it's like hmm. everyone gravitates to something different. Everyone excels in something different, which is the cool part about track is that, you know, it's obviously challenging for everyone, but it's just weird that the same things that, you know, make my body not work are things that your body excels at. Like, that's just so, so interesting to me. Wow. It's so, it's so interesting, but 
Um, I'd say like a drill. Usually it's hard to pick a drill only because the drills are usually the part where you're like before the workouts, so you're like, okay, I'm still in the clear. I still have a little bit longer before the workout starts. Um, but that's a good question. I think anything spiked up is usually challenging for mm -hmm. all of us. Like when you got the spikes on, like, spikes. you know, it's game mode, you know, like those shins are going to be hurting. Um, yeah. Like I had really bad shin splints at Tampa. Um, and it's, Dang. yeah, it's one of those things that never really goes away. I don't think. So I think it's like for me, especially the whole spike thing might just be a hypersensitive topic. Um, or just like drills in general, just cause I feel it instantly. Like I feel it right away. Um, but yeah, I think for the most part, the drills tend to be the part where you're like, yeah, like we're just getting in the groove of things, like kind of just, kind of just moving along. And then the workouts, the part where you're like, okay, like I can't hide anymore. I can't, what, I can't. What goes through your head when you are on the line in the blocks and like, is, is there any specific race where you may be the most uncomfortable? I know that's a crazy question. Actually. That is. I think I'm asking because I think I'm asking just because like I don't I don't know that shot. Yeah. You know, like the people that are watching, we just see you do the right. You're like you're locked in, you're going in. <laughs> or you're Noah Lyles doing like the little with his little card. Um it's very weird because I've tried to find the balance of fun and competitiveness. And I get really nervous before mm -hmm. a race. I get really like anxious. Um, but I still like, it's still fun, but finding the balance between having fun and letting your thoughts wander a little bit. And then knowing the time where you have to like lock in has mm -hmm. been challenging, especially for the races that are longer, where you have more time to think where your brain actually has time to think about the race that you're running. Like in the hundred, it's really just go. You can be like, obviously I'm probably nervous, anxious at the start, but like, I know what's coming. I know I only got X amount to run like A to B baby. Let's get this done. But like the 400 for me has been challenging because I can lock in. I have to take the time. My my brain doesn't automatically go to mute. It doesn't automatically go to white noise. It's wandering. I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about that. Um, thinking about my race plan, but then also thinking about, you know, stuff that is life that I don't want to think about when I'm getting ready to run a race. So definitely like training your brain to be race ready is something that I don't think I've perfected yet, but I wow. think that could take me to the next level if I do. Um, it's just one of the, you have a minute to think about so many things. Wow. And sometimes, you know, like you can't control where your brain wants to go at that moment. Like, it's just so, it's so interesting and it's, it's, it's hard to control. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I think it's just, it's one of those things where I think before the race, I'm just trying so hard to like block everything out and I do get really nervous and I have all these like little, um, uh, what do you call it? Superstitions. Superstitions. Okay. I, like, have <laughs> I have to tie both my shoes three times. Three times. I have to, yep. I got to biofreeze each shin and I have to take five minutes and I have to biofreeze all my, all my legs. Got and it. then it's just like, there's a bunch of little things. Um, so you're you're on the line. Bio freezed up. Bio freezed up. Can't feel a thing. <laughs> people can like. I mean, my my experience with bio freeze. Oh, the no. people in the lane next to me. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my, it's in their eyes, like tears coming down their face. Like, what the hell? What the fuck is that? It's that's me. the tactic. It's it's like, I got him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's my fault. That's my fault. Percent. <laughs> and um, yeah. So that's probably. I've, I've like gaslit myself into being like, oh, like if I biofreeze everything, then I won't, like the race won't even hurt. Like I'll just literally be able to run like a 49 flat if I have biofreeze on my legs because if I can't feel it, I won't get any lactic in my, that's false. Okay. Is it's it not lactic? true information. Is it just you can't feel it now and then the lactic like. like I, you hey. can still feel it. You can mm -hmm. still feel it and I have tears running down my face. So it's like a double homicide. Like <laughs> it didn't really, I, but it's like placebo. It's placebo. A hundred percent. So like you got to do what you got. You got to play mind games with yourself at that point. Is it yeah. possible 
to see other like track runners and like say if you get online right yeah this is just like a, a question i have no absolute clue yes you get on the line okay. will you be able to tell if you look like to your left or your right and you see how people are, like setting up can you tell which people are not going to come out the blocks well or is that's not even like your focus because you're in your own lane well that is what i'm trying not to think about but i'm thinking about yeah. first off Oh, that's a good question. It's very interesting because it's very, that's like a subconsciously, it's a stereotypical answer. Mm -hmm. If you line up, you got an arm sleeve and a leg sleeve, I'm getting my ass whooped. If you've got mm -hmm. like, yeah, if you mm -hmm. got, I'm trying to think like, usually if you have glasses on your last place, but nothing means anything. I got my ass cooked by Miss Girl and her glasses. Okay. But tell like, me more. What are some things that like like that? Like that track kind of women look for? Yeah. Well, it's also interesting because track women specifically, everyone can be built so differently. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of sports have, you know, you end up having similar body types just because you're doing the same workouts and doing the same. And obviously, like with track um runners, there are similarities. But having run track and then like seeing myself in pictures or videos like lined up with all these girls, some of these girls are like six foot one with giant strong legs. Some of them are short and skinnier and they're running the same times. And that mm -hmm. is just the most fascinating thing to me that like our bodies can be so different and perform so different, but still successfully um, and at such a high level. And so I think that in general, having now actually been in the position of being an athlete next to the girls, like you stop looking at, oh yeah, you have sick tats. Oh, you have nerdy glasses on. Oh, you have your jersey doesn't fit you correctly. Like none of the outside factors make you an athlete or not. Like you, I just have learned to kind of I mean, I've always respected every athlete, whether, you know, what you look like on the outside, but definitely from an at like a competitive standpoint, um, I think it's easy to judge people by how they present themselves at the line, like confidence wise, like mm -hmm. swag wise, somebody get up and they're like, they do the, like the little big jumps and I'm like, oh no. That's me. So, That's me. And then um Yes, yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I think it's definitely just, like being able to not not look at anyone else on the line, not pre-assume anything about anyone on the line and just focus on yourself and lock in on yourself and kind of just run your race because that's what everybody else is doing. So you got to you got to focus on yourself as hard as it may be and as intimidating other um, athletes might be next to you, mm -hmm. especially when they're like right next to you. Yeah. And you're just like, what do you? What are you doing? Over there? What are you doing that I should be doing right now? So it's definitely um, kind of just like focusing on yourself, which sounds easy, but it can be difficult. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like you're like you're in a season of just like so many different adjustments, like adjusting yeah. to a new place, not a new sport, but you know, just like your teammates. Relatively, yeah, yeah, I know. What yeah, you mean. Like, so learning more about your sport that you're in right now, mm -hmm. still like you said the do's and don'ts of everything. Yeah. Is there anything I want to say specific? What do you like about the campus? Because I, I have not been to FAU yet. Oh, so first off, it's a great size. I know that that's like kind of a general kind of boring answer, but Tampa was very much like small, compact, which I also liked for different reasons. Um, but that's the type of that's the type of campus where like you walk to classes and you see the same twenty people, and you know you start to like know everyone's name and like, which is a good thing, and it's a match for a lot of people, and it was for me at the time. And then now is more, you know, it's much more spread out. It's um, a little bigger, but still obtainable where I can get from one place to the other without, you know, setting aside like an hour to get to my class. So I do like the size. Um, I love that there are iguanas here, the big, massive ones. Tampa didn't have those. They have cute little baby lizards, and I love those. But it's this. Gross. <laughs> Yes, and lots of like rabbit squirrels. <laughs> and so here they have the big iguanas. The frick. And they are massive. And like right outside my dorm on my way to my classes, there'll be like 15 of them all just in a little group having a little iguana party. What? And 
so and I love how they run where they have like their weird little legs. <laughs> you know, little side run, you know what they look like too. You know what they look like. And so I think just like having little like I got little dinosaurs outside on my way like to class. Like that's that's unreal. Like mm -hmm. it's just so fun. And I think overall, like there's just little things. We have like a little climbing wall that you can go to and it's right next to the track. It's like open for like a little free climb. I haven't gotten my climb on yet, but that doesn't mean I won't. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I won't. And we did it for a team building exercise, actually, at the beginning of the year. It was so fun. I feel uh, like you're just trying to catch an iguana. I can feel it. I feel like that's something you would do. <laughs> Chase after it. Well, you remember John, John from the team. You remember him? Describe him. The buff one. Oh, yeah. That's all you have to say. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, he was. I posted a picture. He was telling me about. He kills them, like, for fun. For, for yeah. what? It's like they're, they're an invasive species. I have to kill them. John. He needs some help. <laughs> John. <laughs> That's wild. That's what I'm saying. John just be, well, I don't know if that's uh, enclosed information. Killing them with what? I didn't go. I didn't ask that far. Okay, okay, okay. No. I was just, I just shut him down so quickly. I was... No, especially the video is like a cute little video. Read the room, John. <laughs> John <laughs> read, the room. Boy, bro. read the room. <laughs> Too soon. So, yeah, I think overall, like just and then the beach is a mile from campus. That's beautiful. Perfect. Yeah. You can see it from the football stadium. You can walk. Mm hmm. So like if you look over the bleachers over top of like the um, stadium bleachers, you can see it like over. On top of it, you can see like the ocean from um, the stadium if you're at a game, which is really cool. I think it's really fun. And having a football team because I didn't at Tampa. Mm -hmm. So it's so fun. I've been getting my school spirit on. I was telling someone else literally like two weeks ago yeah. that I've never uh, have been to a school with a football team. And so ever? the very first football ever and the very first football game I went to was Tom Brady's last game. Tom Brady. That's a great game to go to. Crazy. Like I didn't, I wouldn't what have team known. was he on at the time? The Bucks. Like that was the last time. Oh, like the recent one? Yes. Like the last. It was That's it was such so an impressive guy. Because it was like one of my friends from church. Like, would you want to go to the game? Because yeah. he's a New England fan. And so I was like, mm -hmm. I've never been to a game. I don't have anything else to do today. I also need to take a break. You're like, may so, as well. It was two hundred dollars though. Because you know I think it was worth every penny. Oh, it was definitely yeah. worth it. Yeah, Tom won. Brady's so cool. Be the Eagles. Yeah. That's so fun. My brother was like Tom Brady's number one fan. But he wasn't a bandwagon. Like, he was one of the OG fans. OG. He rose to fame with him. Do you watch football? Enough to know what's going on. Like, if, we gotta, if I got to sit down and we got to watch football, I'll get in it. I think it's so interesting. I know enough about it to be <laughs> – not a, like I won't say, oh my gosh, if, which way is the ball going? I won't. I won't do that. So I know enough to like watch it with someone. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you won't be the person like, what's going on? Like, what's no. going on? But I also won't be like, what side oh is it? Oh my gosh, so and so's throwing it to so and so. Oh my gosh, so and so really just messed up right there. Like, I won't know everyone's name, but I don't know how people do know everyone's name. Like, you can't even see them. Mm hmm. Yeah. You can't even see what they're doing. Like guys are different. We know guys that. are di they are. Yeah. And this is literally my first year of being fully immersed into football. And yeah. now I know I know everyone. Like you could just tell by how they That's so interesting. Football. And it's also crazy. you'd think it would be the opposite though. Like guys idolizing guys that way in any other part of life would be like, <laughs> like so so not accepted. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. why have you memorized 200 guys' names? And why are you wearing his – why are you wearing his last name on your back? But it's – you know what I mean, though? I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. And the way you put it that way, of course, it's like, oh, why would you have to say that? Uh, yeah. Also, how you were saying earlier, like, someone is really good at what they do. And, like, you just yeah. appreciate them because either you can't do it or you yeah. just know that the way that they are, they were, like, gifted. Like, like awesome. 
Yeah, like look at like Tyreek Hill. That guy's probably the fastest person. He's so fast. You know? And yep. some of the players that I've been around that have got to play against him, they yep. say the same thing, like freak of nature. Freak, freak of nature. Of He's crazy. So like I don't well, know. Well, and that's one of those things too, like where it's at that level where you don't even have to play the sport to like look up to you're just like that's so cool like he's so talented he's like that's awesome mm-hmm. I yeah and football is like a, just a fun sport to follow okay i'm ready <laughs> you're so good I'm, I'm i just started following it like i yeah. i have not literally before i worked for a cliff never watched football. Nothing. only Did you the one that got you into it but, but i had to because like we i had to keep up with like Who's coming to the gym or just like what's going on on the TV? What are we talking about in this conversation? Yeah. You know, so there be at first there were plenty of conversations where most of the guys were like talking, I'm just sitting there because I, I like, uh, talking. yeah, that makes sense. So now, now I understand a lot more. Yeah, and it's just a lot more fun because you never know who's going to come around to the gym. You, you never, never know who you're going to meet. So it's, it's kind of cool just to know who someone is and yeah. then something happens you may know a little bit of like the backstory. Yeah, which they can appreciate too because they're like, oh, okay. Like, you know what you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Exactly. The last question I had was, what, is there anything that you are specifically looking forward to this upcoming track season? Oh, that's a good question. Um, It's going to be my first year having a conference championship mm-hmm. for indoor and outdoor. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't really know what that entails entails. I don't really know, you know, how different it's going to feel than a regular meet, but I'm excited to even like, see if it feels different. I'm excited to, you know, feel the level of competition, like your conference, you want to compete with the other people in your conference. Um, So I am excited for that. And I am also excited. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, this year is flying by already. It's going by so fast. It is. I mean, forgetting certain sports are been in season. Like yes, <laughs> yeah. And mine is like, but also it's been such a a mental hurdle too. I just talked with my coach about this. Like we're training and lifting, and you know, just going so hard on our our bodies. And our season is still after training for a few months, still a few months away. So like continuing to wake up every day and keep pushing and keep like. Mm-hmm. grinding when you know that your your end goal of what you're actually training for is still like so far down the road is just in itself something where you're like okay I gotta keep going I got it will pay off it will pay off it will pay off so um coming back to the question though on that point I think that I'm excited to see the hard work pay off like yeah. we've been grinding we've been doing it so and we're all out there and you know I think we all have good days we'll have bad days and we're there for each other every day whether it's good or bad so i'm just excited to see you know the way that we've all uplifted ourselves and each other to kind of like come come through and be able to actually have solidified results of us showing up every day and you know putting in the work even if you know we're not feeling great like we're out there so i'm i'm looking forward to everything coming together all the work that we've put in kind of Showing up, yeah. Fact. Now that I know your schedule and like how hard y'all be working, it's definitely gonna show. Definitely. I'm, gonna. I'm thinking so. Yeah, got a lot of a lot of talented girls and um, kind of just like solid relationships too. Like being able to lean on each other and support each other. It's like a little. It's like a little family. That's all. That's all. Yeah. That's the best part. I, I yeah. think that's what I miss about being the athlete is the yeah. team aspect. But yeah. I'm in places where I still got work with teams, so it's just yeah. It's, so you're part of the family. You're part of a lot of different families. You're like the little orphan, and everyone adopts you. <laughs> yes, maybe <laughs> <laughs> literally that. <laughs> you want him to bring him, bring him, and you Get come him. to our family. Yeah, come here. I know the track team adopted you, and we would adopt you here if you ever needed a home. I appreciate that because yeah. I travel. I, yes. I travel, and I've already have put down. Uh, I don't even know if I want to say. I'll keep that private. Spoiler. Spoiler. Come back to our vlog next time to hear. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I'm, I travel. So, if you honestly, if you guys needed any extra anything, I travel. That's so fire. Or even in Tampa, if we're there already, I can let you know. We can do something cool. 
Wait, no. I got you on speed dial, Dodge. <laughs> Literally that. Literally. Literally. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to stop the recording, but we need okay. to talk to you. Like, okay. Do you have to go anywhere? Are you busy? Um, I.